So hello and welcome, Dr. Eugene Bagristov speaking, and today I'm going to talk about the implicit association test. About one year ago I started recording the first video where I explained the logic behind it, how it works, and now I think it is time to show actually how to program it. Um, I was not sure if somebody needs it, but last time I received more requests from my students and other people who would like to run an implicit association test. So if you want to know more about the test and what is the logic behind and why you need it, go to my previous video, it will be the same playlist. Anyway, now I'm going to show you uh, two ways how to conduct an implicit association test. And the first one is made for the lab or for personal computer, and the second method is meant for the online implicit association test, which can also be run in a lab if you want to. But first thing first, and I start with the first tool that I discovered many years ago, it's called the Free IAT, Free Implicit Association Test. Um, if you go to the website um, by Adam Mida, this is a, he is a professor at the NC State University. I was in contact with him in 2016 when I wanted to use his tool and I needed to change it. And he sent me the Visual Basics files that I could change. And by the way, he has all the project on GitHub. So if you want to make some changes, you can go there and make the changes that you need. He developed a simple tool, which is called Free IAT. You can download the tool, you can install it, but actually um, it is very simple. I think you can just extract it and copy paste it. So there is no specific installation needed. So you won't need any specific rights to run your implicit association test. The only thing that might be interesting is, of course, that uh, if you start a test, I think it depends on where you started from. So if you are in your Windows folder on a C drive, most likely the program will have the right to record the final data set. So you will have to start it as an administrator with administrator rights. This is my assumption. I think I had this issue. But if you install this program on a, just on a C drive or any folder that is not protected, you shouldn't have this issue. It works very simple. It is very intuitive. This is how it looks like. And I'm going to show you also the folder. After the installation, you have the folder that looks like this. And you can see here the file. You have the IT file for installation. This is the program itself. These are my data, my pictures that I added. I'll show you in a second why I did it. We have the help file. The only thing with the help file, I think it entails not all the information that you need. And sometimes if you want to understand what are the scores only, you need to go to the website by Professor Media and see actually how to interpret the results. Uh, I think it's in how it works. You can find the interpretation. I think it was not in the help file. And this is what you will need later. So this is information that you might need. So media.wordpress.ncsu.edu. Uh, I'll try to post the link in the description of the video. Now to the test itself, how trans, I'm going to set up a test with you because if you install it, there will be no test and you need to set up one first. You start the program. This is how it will look like. You go to, you have here the help file. I don't know what is update. Anyway, we go to set up and here you can set up your first test. What will happen? Uh, the config .txt file will be changed and all the information we will add now will appear there. And let's make this test somehow. We need to call it somehow. Let's say gender bias. Gender bias. Uh, YouTube. Just so we know that it is my recording for YouTube. And the question is, shall we use pictures or not? Because in an implicit association test, you can work with only words, with pictures and words. And I think with only pictures would also work. Do you use images? Yes, I plan to use images just to make it more or less clear what I want to show you. We go to next, it says, do I want to override the old config file? I say yes, it was my training file, so it is not an issue. Now we want to test something and want to see uh, what we want to test. Let's assume we want to test the, um, I think it's social comparison theory that says that female are usually associated with some compassion traits and empathy and males are usually associated with assertiveness and ambition. Let's test whether the theory holds. So uh, we will have the label which will be here. Let's call it empathy. Uh, and this one we call assertiveness. 
And here we need to introduce the words that are associated with empathy. It is a best way, of course, if you have already the paper that says what are the words commonly associated with empathy and what are the words usually associated with assertiveness. If you don't have it, there are two ways to go. The first one is to go to the initial papers, take the definitions and take the descriptions and see what kind of words they were using. Look at the questionnaires that they developed for this specific treatment and take the words from there. The other option is to actually to go to something like thesaurus, thesaurus.com and look for the synonyms for the word that actually we want to investigate. And this was empathy. And if you look here, you have some words, compassion, identification, insight, PT, report, understanding, warmth. Uh, I know it already from theory that compassion and warmth are usually words associated. Just check that the words are not too different in size. PT is a kind of too short, identification is or understanding too long. Try to take the words that are more or less of the same length. And let's take some of them. Uh, we go to our implicit association test and we add here warmth and then we add here compassion and do we have something else what we can add compassion inside report maybe a report this word comes not from the paper but we do it just for a test and then what you do next you go for compassion and see what are the other words associated with it grace would be nice kindness sympathy sympathy is not the same as empathy but why not let's take um grace and sympathy additional and grace actually i think it would be good if we do if we started with the small letters warmth compassion report actually i don't like the word report it somehow doesn't really fit into what i expect from this treatment uh sympathy sympathy and let's take mercy sorrow i don't know what is then strong matches consideration condolence maybe let's take softness and then we have a certainness and theoretical you want to make it correctly so i just show you how to make the test but if you want to make it correctly you go through the synonyms several times you make a list of the synonyms and then you make a treatment test you send it to some people some students or other participants and you ask them to rank the words how close they are to empathy they rank them you make the um what was the friedman's rank test and you take the words which are mostly associated with the empathy and you use these words so this is the official procedure how you should do it if you develop it completely new uh, completely from scratch. Let's take assertiveness to see what assertiveness. Uh, sir, you, uh, sorry for my typing. Assertiveness. And we have decisiveness, determination, resolution, willpower. Let's take some of the words. Oh, these are weak matches. Actually, I would like to have strong matches. Uh, willpower um, determination um, is no not really what I wanted let's go to willpower and see what other synonyms ah, no synonyms for willpower this is interesting it has a strong match with what we know as assertiveness but not with something else but okay um, let's take conclusiveness. Uh, I'm not a native speaker, that's why maybe my feeling is wrong, but anyway, ambition is at least one of the treatments. It's not assertiveness, but associated with assertiveness from the papers that I know. Uh, let's look at Aggressiveness. Oh, this is actually a much better thing because it is known as decision, known as forcefulness. Aggressiveness. Aggressiveness. The problem with aggressiveness ambition is a bit too short. As you see, these words are shorter than these ones, which is not good. That's why I usually try to 
find uh, the words that are also not too different because people will work with them very fast and we need to understand that they manage to read through the words or at least in this event they will read faster through these words probably we need to find something here some shorter words for this one but okay for the test it's sufficient now we go to the next one it says the condition and the condition is we have the female female and we have male male and here as i said it will be i will use pictures we can add a subfolder and then write actually what would be the um, file name i know already my file so let's call it pictures then it wants me to make a backslash and how do i do it it's a very interesting question how to get to this sign uh. oh it crashed just probably because i tried to i click something wrong i pause the recording get to the same point and continue just a second So I think the recording is continuing. I'm trying to do it one more time. Pictures. And uh, I have the picture of female one dot PNG. Then I have pictures uh, female two dot PNG. And I have pictures backslash female three dot PNG. And here I would have, can I copy it? Yeah, this would greatly help. For the mail, I have the same, but with the mail. So, picture mail two. And picture mail three. How to select picture? There is also, it is explained in my previous video. If there are questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I continue, click on next now it says how many trials i want to have on each stage i will do it now rather for fun but if you want to make it correctly you need to see what is the recent requirements from literature i think it would be 20 20 40 at least 20 40 and some people say it should be even more so we start with a simplified version and just make 10 then we'll make 10 then we'll make 20. it is a kind of twice shorter than usually expected but i want to show you how it works and i use comma for separation um, for me it will be easier but you can also use space comma is fine for me click on finish and the new file has been created so now if i go to implicit association test theoretically hopefully it will work you ask your participants to enter your id in this event i take 222 because i had already today a 111 click on begin uh, and it says cannot find the program for the picture email. Ah, yeah, this is the problem. We really, I said the pictures are there, but they are not there. They are not in the folder. There is no folder pictures, and there is something different, what we don't need. So what we do, we create here a new folder. Uh, that I said will exist. This is the pictures pictures and we move the pictures that are pre-selected i made it very simple i'll show you in a second how they look like into this folder pictures and these are the pictures i decided to go for symbolic pictures as you know from my previous video because it's easy to understand male female and people don't really look at specific traits they look at i don't know how nice the person is looking we just have the schematic version of how a person could look like and now we go to free uh, t one more time and try to start it again entering the code 222 and here we go here is the description of what you have to do here is the description of the categories that the empathy and here are the words that we added compassion warmth grace softness sympathy assertiveness and the words associated with it aggressiveness willpower determination conclusiveness vigor and set of images for female set of images for male and then you click ready to begin and then it starts you put your fingers on the, on the letters e and i e for the left i for the right and uh, the thumbs you put on the space and as soon as you click the space you will start sorting things and you need to do it as fast as possible so male to the right female to the left
that was it. I sat on the 10 trials, these were the 10 decisions made as you have seen within some milliseconds. Now empathy assertiveness, as a non-native speaker will be harder for me, but we'll try to do it. So empathy on the left, assertiveness on the right. As you have seen, I made a mistake. Anyway, what I already, what you already notice is the words of a different length and automatically the usual, the more long words there on the right. Now we come to the actually to the main interesting stuff here. This is the sorting of both pictures and words. And now if it is female or empathy to the left, if it is male or assertiveness to the right. And let's try. So this was my test. Actually, you have to do 40 or even 60 of these comparisons. We did it just very fast. Now comes the next trial where we just relearn because males were on the right. Now we have to change. Now the males are on the left and we just need to sort these pictures. So we continue relearning. As you see, I made a mistake. And now we have the second important trial. If male and empathy to the left, if female and assertiveness to the right. Let's try. As you have seen already, the fifth trial was slower. It means it speaks against the stereotypes. So I had more problems associating females with uh, assertiveness and aggressive behavior, but I, you can already see by milliseconds. But if you want to know actually how the results are, you go to the folder and you find the files course only. And if you open the files course only, uh, we need only the last line because I had a previous trials where we trained, it will look like this. No, I think this is the... I don't see the results were not saved because you see 111, but we don't see 222. I think it is the old file. I'll try to reopen it. Let's see. No, it has not been saved for some reason. I think the reason could be that I ran this experiment or maybe press power to exit. Okay, now it's safe. So you don't, I forgot just to finish the question. And now you see the 222. This was my ID that I entered. Then we have the number and I selected comma separated, which was probably not a good idea because it has also comma within it. Uh, so space would be better. As you can see, this number is actually what we can find on the website by Professor Miede. In the description, this is the uh, Greenwald, Nozick, Banaji overall AIT score, GNB score. You can read in the paper, I think it's the paper from 1998, no, 2003, the newer one, where they explain what is GNB score. It is the score with a standardized result, where they, as some people are slower and some people are faster, they divide the final result, these milliseconds, by their standard deviation. So those who are slower become a bit faster, those who are fast become a bit slower, and then you have comparable results. This is what the GNB score is. And you also see what are the other scores. So you can see what was the average time for each trial and so on. What was unfortunately with the commas what would not a good idea, but it's not so bad. It's possible we can differentiate it here. So this would be the uh, spaces. If you put the spaces here, you'll see what the numbers are. You can see what were the standard deviations, what were other values and so on. So more or less, you now know. Uh, what is the hack with this test? That you have to run it on the computer and if you want to have, let's say, the test with 20 people, you need to take your computer and run this computer from table to table and ask people to participate in it. <coughs> if you want to do it in a lab, you can. You have to install the same program, make the same configuration for all the computers. But there's a bit simpler way to do it. It's a kind of hard but simple at the end. This test will save these files at the end, scores only txt. And if you, what I did, I just put this folder on our university joint 
web drive. So it was on the server of the university, as you can see, like we have the for Google Drive, Drive G, but we have some other drives for the university. If people start from different computers, which is very good, the problem is that this file is being overwritten. So the one who is the last one, his results will override the previous results. That is why I asked Professor Media to get the code. The code is on GitHub, so you can download it. And the only line I changed in the first situation I just added to this course only plus current ID. And at the end, I had one folder where 40 students participated and tested once. And instead of having one file, course only, I had 40 files. Each time, course only plus the ID of the student. So if even 100 people participate, it will be stored with this ID number. You will have 100 files, which you can easily merge because each file will con contain only one, or if there are two people from the same computer, one after another one, two lines of code that you can easily match. And as you have the IDs, you can give them different IDs. I gave my students ID, let's say, I use now the ID 222. Uh, you can give different other IDs where you can find out who was where. Uh, then you can run it really in a lab. You can even run from different offices. Important is that the results are stored on the server and you have access to it and you can use this data. Uh, you have to take care uh, of the data as soon as it's there. You have to delete it because otherwise all other people will have access. It is anonymized. You don't know the code, but still it's better not to have the data available everywhere. The second thing is, of course, how can you add additional data? You want to know about the um, demographics, uh, what is the age, what is the gender of people. And we resolved it in a very simple way with a, any online survey tool or with a paper and pencil. People received the code and they had to answer these basic demographic questions and they had to use the same code for IIT. And then we can match them. So you have the results from IIT and as you know the code and you have the paper versions of the questionnaires with the age, gender um, and I don't know, educational background, uh, whatever you need, you can then match it and add it manually to your Excel sheet. Or you can do it using Qualtrics or a line survey, any other tool, and then match the files by this ID. So this is how you run it in the lab. In the next video, I plan to show you how you run it online using Qualtrics and the plugin IAT Gen. I hope it was helpful. Wish you all the best. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.